the show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's January the 24th, 2023. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Kanesport.com, joined once again by our managing editor, Matt Shodell, as we discuss the news of the day presented today by Life Wallet, where the time is now to take charge of your personal health. Uh, Matt Shodell, I'm going to tell the truth. I am going to speak the truth right now, and I am going to tell everybody how angry you were at me yesterday morning. I brought you on the show at 5 a.m. You didn't know Azubi and Steven were going to be here as well, taking up all the oxygen in the room, uh, a greater bulk of the airtime on yesterday's show, and you have not spoken to me in 24 hours because I cost you sleep, and I didn't give you enough time on yesterday's show to speak. So... Today, no Zuby, no Steven. It's all about you, man. It is showtime, and we are going to let you hog the microphone all the way because we do have a couple pretty cool stories to talk about. And I don't know whether to start with the commitment that Miami's already gotten or the commitment that Miami is trying to get. Um, I, I think I'll do the, the latter. And uh, let's talk about a defensive lineman by the name of Jamel Howard Jr. from the mean streets of Chicago, who the Miami Hurricanes started chasing just two weeks ago, but they've done such a good job recruiting him that they have been able to get him to come take his final official visit this weekend to Coral Gables. He will be here. Matt, this is a kid that has been earmarked to Michigan for months, okay? But I think it's very noteworthy that he has not signed with Michigan yet. Uh, he actually went to LSU last weekend, and now here he comes down to Miami for a final whirlwind visit, and the Hurricanes are going to take their shot. They need defensive tackles in this class. And um, your thoughts on just where things are with Howard. You spoke to him yesterday. Uh, give us an update. Well, first of all, if I, if I was going to give you the silent treatment, most people consider that a mitzvah. I can, listen, I can go get a Zuby and Steven. I the only thing I told the only thing I told you about yesterday, I said, I said, you have a Zuby and Steven. Why do you need me on the show? I said they did great. That's all I said to you. That's the truth. Because the, the people want you. Nobody I mean, wants the, me. The people, the people want you. Want so. me. There, there's like two posts that are like, you know, Matt's great. But but I could sense it's said in a sarcastic tone, like, yeah, Matt's great. Right. You know, it's a great. You know, it's a sarcastic comment. You don't seem to understand the public the people's nuances. Commentary. But anyway, Jamel Howard, uh, and just for the record, I didn't give Gary the silent treatment. He thinks this is funny somehow that I'm mad at him for take me two take me two minutes. I'm mad at I, him. I, 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 can, I, can, I can grab my phone right now. I could call Steven. It might take two or three calls oh. to wake him up. And I can uh Azubi, he'll wake up in two seconds, and I can have him on the show very quickly. So don't take this for granted. I think man. those guys do great. I, I don't know why. I literally the conversation we had yesterday was use them more, use me less. Nobody needs me on this show. Nobody, nobody wants to be, you know, disheartened about things. And the only reason, this is the truth, okay? People just it's human nature. People feel better about themselves when they see someone who's more miserable than them. It's it's why bullies exist. Bullies are inherently unhappy people for whatever whatever reason. But they feel better when they see other people who are less happy than they are. It makes them feel better. Like, oh, at least I'm not as unhappy as that guy. And therefore, I'm happier. That's the only reason people want me on the show. But anyway, we're talking about Jamel Howard. Jamel Howard is going to make Miami fans very unhappy. Uh, he will not be going to the Miami uh, Hurricanes. Uh, unless he has a great visit and somehow his mom gives the okay. Because his mom, from what I've heard behind the scenes, is the one really running the show. The the only reason he didn't sign early was because of his mom's schedule. Uh, she did want him to take more visits just to make sure because he only took two official visits because she couldn't take more of them prior to the de December signing there. He already would have signed. Uh, you know, Miami got in on him late. He already had four schools that he knew he, you know, two others he wanted to check out. So four now on his radar. Miami's the fifth. He flat out told me Miami's behind the eight ball because they've only been recruiting him for two weeks. It, it's very difficult when, when other schools have recruited you for a long time. And then just because your personal strength coach happens to know Joe Salavea and says, hey, check out this kid, 
and then they check him out and say, oh, yeah, come for a visit. You know, that's not, you know, two weeks to, to, to learn about a program. I, I mean, a, a perfect example is he told me, <laughs> Jamel told me, I didn't put this in the story, but when I talked to him yesterday, he says, he says, yeah, you know, I just learned yesterday that Miami's a private school. He's like, that's great. I'm like, that's not great. You know, that's not great. You, you got a week until signing great. day. What are you talking yeah. about? You have a week until signing day, and you're still learning the basics about a program. Not, <laughs> not a great sign that you've done all your research and you're super excited about this program. So I, I don't expect him to be in the class. Maybe he'll pull a Tracy Howard and, and have this amazing visit, and his mom will be wowed. Uh, maybe they'll have an NIL deal that just blows everyone else out of the water. And I, I can promise you. Well, if they do, then that, that'll be a well, game changer. Think about but. it. They, they had the Cormani McLean, and they've had the Nicholas Harbor NIL deals on the table. Well, it looks like Nicholas Harbor is going to take his official visit to Oregon this weekend. Uh, the way you feel about this one is how I feel about that one. I think Nicholas Harbor is going to go to Oregon. Well, uh, if, he, if, he, if he visits Oregon and never took an official visit to Miami, it's very rare to see somebody commit or sign, rather, with a school they've never taken an OV to when they had a chance to not only in December and cancel it, but also this coming weekend. I mean, if he called Miami today and said, I want to come visit this weekend, of course he can come visit this weekend, but he yeah. apparently hasn't done that yet. So well, you got yeah. Nike over there in, in, in Oregon. Yeah. I mean, like how, how are you supposed to, the guy's a track star with potential with Olympic potential. How in the world are you supposed to beat out Nike in in a situation in an NIL situation like that, you're not going to. It's it, it, it's that simple. So um, I'm expecting him to go to to, to Oregon, and, and um, you know, Cormani's already gone to Colorado. That's a lot of NIL budget sitting around. Okay, that that had been earmarked for this recruiting class, and I'm not suggesting that um, Howard is going to command that kind of money or whatever. But they will be able to pay him whatever they need to pay him in NIL in the NIL world to where NIL is not going to be a reason he doesn't come to Miami. So, so I'm not going to be quite as pessimistic about, about it as you are. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, but uh, I will say this. Okay. I, I, I talked to some people up in Michigan about this yesterday. And what I was told is that Michigan is not very optimistic about getting him that, you know, all this time has passed. He has not signed with them. Um, Jim Harbaugh did take a home visit about a week ago and got that in. Uh, they did not get a commitment from that home visit. I mean, subsequent to that home visit, he visited LSU and now he's visiting Miami. So, you know, what, you know, that, that, if you read the tea leaves and you're a Michigan fan, okay, that's not great. Okay. Um, you know, you do have the connection with the, 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 the coach in Salavea. Now, if the coach is calling Salavea and saying, hey, man, check this guy out. I mean, listen, I've only been doing this for two months, but like when I put two and two together there, like it would seem to suggest that if a coach is ca calling Joe Salve to say, check this guy out, it is with the blessing of Howard that he wants to check out some other places and Miami might be appealing. So I'm not going to be as negative about this one as you are, Matt, and uh, I'm going to say they do have a chance. I mean, whenever you can get a kid to come on an official visit to Miami, the 305, beautiful South Florida from Chicago in the month of January, like you got a shot, man. I mean, I'm sorry. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm not going to you know run to the recruiting prediction machine and start throwing crazy predictions in on this one. Uh, but uh, I do think, they have a chance. Any uh, final they have a that? chance, but he and his coach both told me it's a it's a little bit of a long shot. So you know, I'm not going to go out and, and have people just think that this is going to magically well, happen. They're still going to read the story on the website, hopefully, and and see exactly what he said about yeah, everything. And they can you know they can make their own judgments on it. Uh, so that story is on the website this morning. Um, urge you guys to check it out. And by the way, if you like this show and you like our YouTube channel for starters, hit your subscribe button, hit your like button. It does help us quite a bit with the algorithms at YouTube, help us grow the audience. And if you are not yet a subscriber to canesport.com, today is a great time to become one because you can read the story on Jamel Howard. 
the, the defensive tackle who's visiting from Chicago this weekend, and a whole lot more. We've got tons of coverage from the Battle 7-on-7 seven seven this past weekend. Um, if you just sign up and become a subscriber to canesport.com, hopefully you will not be unhappy. We would love to have you as part of our community. Um, all right, uh, Matt, let's talk about another story that's on the website today. Uh, yesterday, late afternoon, finally, finally, after weeks of anticipation, uh, Iowa cornerback transfer Terry Roberts finally uh, went on social media and said, hey, I am a Miami Hurricane. And uh, I mean, look, this is one of those transfer portal additions that you'll approve of only because he has one year. But I don't think they have enough at cornerback. And, and I think this is a good move by the coaches to, to, to sign Terry Roberts and give themselves another body in the competition there. Uh, he's had injury problems throughout his college football career. No argument. Uh, last year was really the first year, I believe, ever that he made it through a complete season. No. But he graded out extremely, extremely well. One first of the all, stories. He, first of all, he did not make it through a complete season. No. He missed time last year? Well, it was by far his most number of reps in a season. Let me put it that way. And um, it was. Why are you saying no? Because he missed like half the year. He had 13 tackles on the year, uh, you know, but, whatever. But if you look if you look at it, at, at, at the number of reps that he had over the course of the entire season, it was massively more than he had in the previous years. And uh, so, but, but he does have injury issues I, and, and, I, and there's no doubt about it. Uh, but this is a guy that I think in passing situations can help them. He has played a lot of college football. He graded out very, very high. I think the number was close to in the high 80s or 90 uh, last year as a cover guy. He struggles tackling, uh, but we've seen that before. Uh, you know, guys that struggle tackling, playing cornerback for Miami. Uh, but he can help them as a passing down situational cover guy. In my opinion, in my opinion, he also can help them on special teams. So we've got multiple stories on on that. Uh, we've got an analysis that we did. Uh, we also spoke to him to get the inside story on how he ended up at Miami. So all of that is on the website this morning for you guys to check out. Um, Matt, your I would say closing thoughts, I guess, just on the Roberts uh, pickup and what you think it means. Yeah. Is he the greatest player ever? No. Uh, he actually was, a, you know, he, he, he's, he's been hurt. He's been hurt a lot. Look, and he was, he was actually a, a, a backup last spring and then he emerged as the starter and then got hurt last season. He's not great, but again, he has one year left. They need help at cornerback. I'm fine with it. You know, you can take these guys who are gone after a year. I got no problem with that at all. So it's, it's fine. Uh, I know people at Iowa think he's great, but, you know, that's an Iowa program that I would hope is at a much lower level than what I think Miami should be. Uh, so, you know, a guy who was a backup as a, as a, as a fifth-year player, he's a sixth-year player now, but a guy who was a backup last spring as a fifth-year player who's now potentially going to be Miami's starting cornerback, you know, backup at Iowa. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I have mixed feelings. But I know at Iowa, they, they think very highly of him. They say when he's healthy, he's great. So we'll see. I don't know why this popped into my mind while you're talking about Roberts, but been to any good restaurants lately? <laughs> I don't see anybody clamoring for my restaurant reviews. I was going to do a review of Joe Stone Crabs, uh, but you know, I don't know if people want to hear it. I mean, I the, the first you, you actually go there and pay those prices when you catch. I own. used to. I used to before I had a, a friend who's a crabber. So the I, it took about. So my wife's family has gone there for years and years and years, and now they take reservations, but. They've never taken reservations before and you used to have to, um, you know, pay the maitre d' or pay whoever seats you. And uh, I still remember the first time I went without my wife's family and uh, I knew I had to tip on the way out, you know, tip the person who seated you. And I was a little nervous about it. My, you know, my, my wife's family, they showed me how to tip correctly because you can't just, you don't just go up and hand them you know, $40 or $50 for the table afterwards. You have to fold it into a tiny little square, put it in the palm of your hand, hide it from all the other people. Yeah, it's the power handshake. And then you, sh yeah, the power handshake, right? I'm sweating. You know, I, look, I'm, the, I'm not built for this sort of thing, you know? So I'm like sweating. It's like this old guy I've got to um, pay the money to. And uh, you, you, know, and you gave him $50? 
I think it was 40. It's a pretty good tip. Yeah, this was years ago. And I go up and I stick my hand out and he sticks his hand out. And when I tell you, it felt like it took 10 years and he was just like feeling my inside of my palm. It was very uncomfortable. It, it, uh, there was a lot of, a lot of tension <laughs> in my hand. And so it's happening like, now that they're taking reservations. I mean, my hand was actually molested by this guy for it felt like an eternity. I mean, he was just like feeling every crevice. Well, you're giving him 40 bucks. What do you expect? Hand. Yeah, it shouldn't have been that hard. You think the guy would have done it before you just get in, get out, you know? Um, no. no, when someone's giving you 40 bucks, you, you know. Them. The only the only thing that I would say to people, and 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 this is true. Well, first of all, the, the Joe's menu is a lie. Let's start with that. Uh, it's a lie. They they say on the menu that crabbers are only allowed to take one claw. Not true. The Florida law is you can take both claws as long as they're legally sized. You know, they try to make it sound like Disney World in this menu, okay? The other thing I would add is uh, their, their, big, their big dish, and they opened, God knows when, 1900-something, I don't know, a long time ago. But they, they had this fried chicken, right? And they always wanted to be the original owner uh, – one they were cheap. brothers. They split off. I don't know. One of them opened some place up north, and Joe's is the, the is the Joe's brother. Joe is the brother who opened this one, and he always wanted to have this have something for people who don't who don't have a lot of money, and uh, so the fried chicken I think has been it was like four dollars and ninety nine cents for years. I think maybe that's like, like eight six, bucks. I think you know yeah. it's like six ninety nine or seven ninety nine. It's still the best deal you'll ever get. I yeah, mean, if you. If you want to eat cheap, you know, you can bring a family of four, have the fried chicken, and leave and pay $8. I mean, a whole family could eat this fried chicken. But, of course, you're going to want stone crabs, and you're going to want um, – uh, oh, I also highly recommend the, the – I don't know why my wife's family is super weird with this stuff, but she, my wife literally has called and asked – you know, you, you place an order for something, and she would ask for her French fries, well done. You know, this is the type of person that's in my family. And so when, when she goes with her family to uh, Joe's, they order the hash browns, but they tell them to cook it on both sides, which you can go ahead and try that, people. You know, I, I don't know uh, if it's any better because I never had it regular. All I know yeah, is they it order be it. pretty good. They order it. Yeah, they order it well done on both sides, whatever both that sides. means. Yeah, French fries good. well done. Hash browns well done on both sides. Uh, highly recommend the tomatoes with the spinach. Of course, you can get stone crabs there, but but why bother when you have them right in the bay? Just just go grab some traps out of the bay, you know. So, so let's cut to the more important uh, aspect of this: that they're taking reservations now. Oh, and the key lime pie. Yeah. So we went. I did go with my wife's family one time when the mm -hmm. reservations happened. Uh, my wife's family does not make reservations because apparently they prefer to spend the extra money to still tip people when you don't need to. Even with the new reservation system, you used to, when you were a regular and you go in there and they know they're getting their 50 bucks for a table, you know, you get seated right away. I mean, that's the secret of the whole thing. You know, nobody will say it out loud, but they know who you are. They stick you in the line. They announce your name, whatever it is. I mean, I know all the guys' names over there that, that let you in. I'm not going to say their names, but, um, but they know who you are. You walk up to them. Hey, what's up? You know, oh, you know, okay. And then they call your name a minute later. They put you on the right side of the restaurant where you're, you know, you get, and they get you right in or as my wife's mother used to do, she would just walk to the back immediately, which you're not supposed to do, but that's what my wife's mother would do. And it seems to work. Uh, but now with reservations, it's a whole different animal. You still have to pay if you didn't make a reservation, but you're basically waiting. We waited, I want to say, 20 or 30 minutes the one time I went. when there's, The reservations has screwed up. We call it stupping. You shouldn't call it stupping because, you know, it's not a pleasant word for people who just look up the definition of it. But us Jews, we call it, you know, you stup. That's when you give them the money. It's actually a much dirtier word than that in real life. Uh, but, but you know, you're, you're, you're basically stopping for nothing because you're sitting in line for half an hour anyway, like you have a reservation. So you're just like a normal reservation person who's paying 50 bucks for no reason. So the whole reservation. So they're cutting into stuff. the revenue of the maitre d'ish. Yeah. Because yeah. most people who have a reservation aren't tipping him on the I, way out. I don't understand why they made the, the reservation system at all. A, from what I heard, this is what I was told. Um, I, I was told Joe's used to be open, I think, a half a year or maybe eight months out of the year. Now they're open sort of year round just with frozen stone crabs or no stone crabs at all. But from what I heard, those six or eight months, they the the the, the waiters, not even the maitre d's, the waiters would make six figures, six figures in six oh, to eight months. And now they had four months off. It was the best job in the world. Yeah. 
Um, but now with this reservation system, you know, it's all tax-free shopping money now. No longer. But nobody wants to hear about this stuff. This is not... Oh, oh I did see... I will tell you, I did see Mark Stoops used to eat there all the time. I saw him. Um, Billy Joel. I saw Billy Joel there. Uh, a young lad went up to Billy Joel. Billy Joel's at the table next to Billy Joel's coming to town this week, by the way. Yeah. You I'm might see Billy, him there I'm again. I'm not a Billy Joel fan because this young lad went up to Billy Joel and said, Mr. Joel, can I please have your autograph? And he said, no, I'm eating. And turned back around. Um, so my, my son that. wasn't, my son did not like that. Um, cause he didn't get Billy Joel's autograph. No, it was not my son. And then, oh, I did see Don Shula ate there. I saw Don Shula there back in the day, obviously. Why are you talking about people that are deceased? Come on, man. Well, cause he ate there. I'm just telling you, this is the, the know, but you're going to, you're ruining the mood. Tell the story without getting depressed. Like a lot of us, really, people a lot of us looked up to Don Shula. Okay. I was covering Don Shula when I was 14 years old. It was a very monumental moment I mean, in my Jim Brown and there, I saw career. Jim Brown. Like if I saw Jim Brown and Don Shula there, I can't say that. Like that's uh, impressive. I was impressed seeing those guys there. You don't have to bring up people that are deceased. I mean, that, now, now, now I feel like crap. It's called honoring their memory. Nah, man. It's five you can't mention it's, somebody's it's, name? Like what are you talking about? Nah, man. It's like they went to a restaurant. Come wow. On. Wow. It's depressing. But go ahead. Finish. It's not depressing at all. Depressing. I mean, I don't understand why. Yeah, uh, I mean, anyway, I mean, you're talking about, uh, you know, like a light, like the point is legends. The point, the point is, you go there and you see like legends there. There are football teams that eat there. If if the Super Bowl is happening that week, every player from those Super Bowl teams are going to be there at some point, most likely. It's a it's a, a place you go to go and be seen, and it's pretty good food. And you, now you get to wait a half hour, even if you're stopping people, and you know whatever. My greatest memory of Joe's was uh, singing "Happy Birthday" to Howard Schnellenberger's wife Beverly. At wow. Joe's. that was a that was a very cool night. I'm not going to go into the whole story. All right, listen, we got a, a few more things to talk about today, but first, uh, I'm going to make Matt mad and and play his favorite life. Oh ball. Lord! How you feeling? I feel really dizzy. Do you have a life wallet? I do have life wallet. Program activated. Hey, George, you all right? Actually, I'm great because I have my life wallet. Can you believe after filming that commercial, Daryl Jackson had the audacity to go to Florida State. I mean, that is unbelievable to me. Like, absolutely unbelievable. Um, but anyway, uh, so in addition to those stories we already talked about, we, we do have a, a lot of recruiting coverage on the website today. Uh, we, we've got a continuous stream of stories that you'll keep seeing out of Battle Miami and some of the kids that were there that have Miami Hurricanes interests. Um, one of them is uh, Shaman Madonna safety is Quan Patterson. Uh, who was one of the talks of the tournament over the weekend. And uh, we catch up with him about his Miami recruitment. I think you'll find uh, that interesting. We also do a status check-in today with uh, Vincent Shavers. Um, he is a um, he is set to announce his decision next month. So check that out. Along with the story on Fort Lauderdale Dillard defensive tackle, a 2025 kid, Anthony Smith, who also was recently offered by Miami. And uh, he was on campus this weekend, and we bring you the latest on him. Uh, the Miami baseball team has been picked for another top 25 preseason ranking. We bring you that story. We also catch up with Jim Laranega, who's still steaming over Miami's loss at Duke the other day. Uh, you can tell Jim's, Jim knows he has a good team, and, and his heart is really into this season, and as it should be, obviously. But these close, like, one-possession losses on the road uh, are clearly starting to uh, wear on him. And Miami plays at Florida State tonight, Matt. And 
I think this is a really big game for this team. I mean, you know, Florida State's been playing better basketball lately, and uh, Miami needs to prove that it can win on the road again, and uh, they have not been playing as well on the road. Uh, but a, a testament to how good they are is even when they're not playing as well, they are still in the game right till the final uh, seconds. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you agree or not, but I just I think that this is a, a big night for Miami basketball. Uh, Miami wins by six. Can I do my DNR now? You just went through a whole thing about Joe's and you want to go off topic again? It's not off topic. DNR is about the football team. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Because we were talking about, you know, we were talking about um, Terry Roberts before, but of, of course, Gary didn't ever ask the pertinent question. He just wanted to talk about him as a player. The pertinent question about Terry Roberts <sighs> is at the end of his interview with, uh, with me yesterday, when I asked him his goals and, his, and, and I said, look, you probably haven't seen that much of the team. You don't know that much about the team, whatever. But, you know, you could mention some team goals also. And what he said was, what he responded reminded me of how players used to talk at Miami. He said, quote, competing for a national championship, uh, DB, you know, he said, winning the Jim Thorpe award, ACC defensive back of the year, an all American, my long-term goal is to be an NFL hall of famer. This is how old school Miami players used to talk. And they still believe it. Every player on the team still believes that that can happen, but they've been taught not to say it. It's this, there's nothing wrong with politically correct universe that we live in, okay? Uh, actually, I was talking with somebody yesterday about, can you imagine if somebody had to rewrite the Bible in a politically correct manner, you know, what it would actually look like, you know? I mean, all the stuff in the Bible, nowadays that would be just, you can't even say that, like, you know, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there that probably wouldn't go over so well. Uh, you know, the Oedipus complex for sure wouldn't exist. You can't have that. Uh, mentioned in a politically correct world either. We talked about that yesterday, a friend, a friend of mine who I always walk to uh, get coffee with. But anyway, that's a tangent. For some reason, I never go on tangents. That's the first time ever. So listen, here's my problem. I, I don't like that these sports information people feel like they have to coach players and even coaches. I've seen the sports information football person literally go up to Mario Cristobal and tell him what we're going to ask and how to respond to it. Like, I know that's what he's doing. It's bizarre to me. Just let them talk, man. Why are we living in this universe now where they can't just say what they actually think? Every, like, fans complain during spring practice. These interviews are so boring. Well, you know why they're boring? Because of the sports information department at every school. It's not just at Miami, at every school. Clinton Portis used to predict before an FSU game, how many yards he'd rush for, and he wasn't saying 40 yards on 20 carries, okay? This is not Miami. Miami should be brash. People that are recruits, recruits want to see the Deion Sanders, the Ed Reeds, the people who keep it real. Like, let the players speak their minds. If you want to differentiate yourself, I was talking yesterday about how if they want to differentiate themselves, make a Miami offer special again, not just offering three years before you're a senior with everybody else, you know, it's okay to be the last offer. If you've done your homework and you're the only school that did your homework and you let the player know that, like, look what we did to make sure that we know who you are. This is what we know about you. And that's why you have an offer. Whereas every other school just offers you off your stars and five minutes of film or whatever it may be. You know, you can do that now because if you let your players be brash, be brave, just speak their minds, not be afraid of the media. These players don't want to go literally mm -hmm don't want to go to media availabilities anymore because they're scared they're going to say something wrong and get reamed out by a coach afterward, which happens. It is way too intense. No argument. It did happen. But, but Matt, we got to give a shout out to Josh White, the baseball sports information. Yeah, director, he was man. great. He, he was is great. the man. Let me tell you something. We are going to have some great baseball coverage coming yeah. up, and Josh White gets a big assist on it. Really. Josh is a guy – and listen, and it's a little bit different for him because football, for whatever reason, is super intense. Baseball players, they're not coached what to say. They're just, like, happy to be interviewed. It's like, wait, you want to do a story on me? Whereas football players are like, oh, another interview, you know? So it's a little different animal. Josh has it a little bit easier than on the football side of things. But, it, but isn't it? But it was, it's so but, refreshing to be able to do your job without so much intensity. Oh, my gosh. Josh, he, you know, he, he tells me, like, I was talking to him yesterday for a little bit just to, to get some info on, on the baseball team because we're going to have an availability on Friday. And we're just chatting because he's actually, believe it or not, he's from my hometown. We're both from Port Washington, New York. 
Really? And we were sharing our uh, favorite pizza places and among other things. And then I, I just asked him, you know, what's like, just give me a cool little tidbit about the team this year. And he mentioned this player. I posted on the message board as one of my notes from, from the team yesterday. But whoever it is, this guy's like 6'5", 225 pounds. He's the tallest player on the team. And Josh says, surprisingly, surprise, unsurprisingly rather, he wears number 99. He's Aaron Judge. You know, he's Miami's Aaron Judge. He was a top offensive recruit a year ago. He got hurt. Uh, so that's sort of cool. You know, little things like that, which we don't ever hear from, from the football side of things. You know, the football side of things isn't like, oh, do you want to do a story on this player? Because he's, you know, he rode a kangaroo when he was living in Australia. I don't think that's legal. But I'm giving an example. You know, they never, ever come to the media with ideas. Whereas Josh White will actually go to the media and say, maybe you want to do a story on this guy. Like this, the purpose of sports information department to me is to, to promote stories, not to prevent stories. You know? Correct. And, and but but it's not just Miami. It's it's the it's it's the world we live in. The world we live in is prevent information. The media has become the enemy. Yeah, and it's sad because all we're supposed to be is a good journalist is just a conduit between the information source and the public, and that's what we are. If you're an editorialist, that's different. That's your opinion. But if you're going to write a feature on a player, that's all we're doing. We're we're a conduit. We're we're expressing the player's life to the public and they don't want us to do that anymore. And it's a shame, you know, they have their in-house stories, which are canned, which, you know, can't, they, they won't ever write anything remotely interesting. You know, it's all going to be positive. He grew up fishing for trout in his lake in his backyard and he enjoys eating hamburgers and French fries. And uh, he plays football once a week, you know, I mean, who cares, man? Like there's a lot of interesting stuff on this team that they they, that will never be reported because those players will not open up to the media. We don't get one-on-ones anymore. Nobody does around the country. There are some programs where you can't even interview the student athletes during the year. If I remember correctly, there was one, was it Florida and Alabama? I think Alabama you get, I think the head coach and one coordinator a week. And I think at Florida, maybe it was a couple of years ago, the previous coach, um, there was almost no access at all, you know? So, I mean, Miami still lets us get a little bit, but they used to literally be proud at Miami and they would tell the media, we are the only program in the country that treat our student athletes like they're NFL players. We have an open locker room. We have full access on the sidelines. We can go up to any player and ask them anything. They were proud of it. Now, it's all gone. It's all gone. There's nothing special that makes Miami different. And I wish they would get to, to say, this is why Miami is unique. Miami, instead of becoming its, its own entity and being unique, has decided to join the rest of the pack and just close up shop and not let these players have their personalities and not be brash. The swagger that used to exist at Miami, how do you get swagger other than what you could see on a Saturday now? It used to be swagger used to also be how they'd speak to us, you know? I mean, they had a, a they were dominant, but they were publicly dominant. They beat opponents sometimes before they stepped on the field but they beat them before they stepped on the field by using the media. In the media, they would do it. Now, God forbid, you put up a locker room material saying, I think we might win. Oh my God, how could you say you think we're gonna win? Are you crazy? They're gonna put that in the locker room and they're gonna be all mad now. What are you thinking? I'm sick of it. I, I talk way too long. Can you cut like half that out, Gary? People are gonna be pissed at me. All right, uh, also cut, to- Cut that out, cut out the Joe stuff. <laughs> Nobody wanted to hear that. We've got like a five minute show, but it's fine. People would no, rather. Man, I, I promised show. you would be able to hog the mic today, and you're delivering. I mean, you're, you're, well, you're I don't want to hog the mic. You're, 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 you're capitalizing on my airtime generosity. Um, anyway, um, uh, on the final note today, we continue our Kane Sport 30 for 30 series with a look at number 10 on our list. Okay, now listen, let's have some real talk here for a minute. Like, what was the rest of it? Fake talk? No, but no, this is like some heart to heart real talk with with our viewers. All right, listen, like we all want this thing turned around. We all want to see Miami winning ACC championships, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And I I laugh when I see some of the anger towards Mario already. And like, like I'm thinking to myself, like, what are these guys thinking? Like, what do they think that this Miami roster was like and is still like? And in in relation to some of the top teams in college football, so we're sitting here doing this thirty for thirty, and we're at number ten now with a guy that was injured the last half of the year. Okay, that 
has hardly done anything in his Miami career. We have him ranked as the number 10 player coming back who's had 30 or more reps last year. You're channeling my negative energy way too much, Gary. Isn't he going to be the greatest tight end ever? It's reality. This is reality, folks. Don't you uh, think he's going to be the greatest tight end ever, though? I mean, you do, right? You love I Elijah think, I think he's a good player. Yeah. I, I think it remains to be seen how good he can get. Uh, I think there's a lot of good players at that position that are going to command playing time. We'll see what happens. But um, I'm the talking scary, about The scary here. thing is he's legit number 10. And he's never started. He started one game, I think, his whole career, or two games. I mean, that's that says something about the roster challenges that Mario's facing this year. You know, there's no doubt about it. This is when you really come face to face with it when you go through exercises like this. You know, and, and we see it. And I've been yelling for years. There is not impact talent on this football team, and people start yelling at me on the message boards. But we have five five stars and four stars, and 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 we do have elite talent. Well, no, just because you're ranked a four or five star in high school doesn't mean you're elite when you get to college. When you get to college, you're not elite. You have to earn elite. And not too many guys have earned elite here for a long time. Uh, that's reality. Um, but anyway, Elijah Arroyo is a good player. Uh, he's worthy of being number 10 in our 30 for 30. Uh, just hasn't done much yet. And it's kind of indicative of where the roster is. But still, you know, make sure you check that out. Uh, we do think Elijah... Uh, can come back off injury and have a pretty decent season this year. So that's going to do it for today for Good Morning Kane Sport. Uh, thank you so much for starting out. Hey, your day with- by the way, hashtag bring back Azubi and Steven. It's going to be trending tomorrow. <laughs> I fully support it. Hashtag get Matt Chodell off the show. I fully support that as well. No, thank it's going to be hashtag tell Matt to come to my restaurant. I want $40 too. That's going to be the hashtag. Big tipper, man. You're, you're I, like, I only did it like twice because my, you know, I I was forced to go without my without my wife's family. My wife's family usually handles the, the that sort of thing. I had to do it a couple of times because we went with people who didn't have connections, and we so apparently what, did. they told you you had to give forty bucks, huh? What, what was explained to me by Ellen's family in no uncertain terms was that they will get us in, but we had I had better darn well give them the money at the end because they will know if I don't, apparently. I oh, mean, they will know. Track mentally of... Oh, they know. Yes, they yeah, do. I don't know how they know because every everybody... Yes, they know. Everybody gives them money. Is. There's 50 million people out there giving them money. How do they keep track? Oh, I, I can they barely know. keep track of, of my calendar on a given day. They know how, how many people are giving them... No, no money they know. And, and the, the thing I wonder, though, is like how this new reservation thing is going to affect those guys. Like, I, yeah. like if you make a reservation and you get your table relatively close to the time of your reservation... Why would you hand them forty dollars on the way out? Like, if you want to be nice and you've been taking care of them for years, you might give them a twenty or something or ten or Listen, whatever. If you if you don't give them the money, you'll still get seated at some point. But they will know, and they will give you the day old crabs. Apparently, they have a they have a pile of day old crabs for people they don't like and out of towners that are rude. That's what I've heard. I don't know if it's true or not. I believe that is correct. I believe it's true. I think I those rumors are accurate. I believe that's accurate. So don't rumors. be rude. And don't act like an out of towner, or you get the day old crabs immediately if you don't get fresh stone crabs. Yeah, you know, my my in laws sent them back once, and they're like, "Oh, we gave it from the wrong pile." So sorry. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah, you could t- absolutely tell the difference. Oh yeah. Um, all right. Well, this is really it. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us this morning. Uh, sorry for putting up with Matt's off-topic nonsense. Um, Terrible. Except for those. Terrible. Of you that, except for those. The, of you that good like news is the good news is nobody actually watches to the end of the show, so. Maybe they watch the first five minutes and they won't even notice. Might, but, uh, the bottom line is there's some good stuff on the website. Make sure you get to canesport.com as your day goes forward. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody.